Can trains travel underwater? What? They go underwater and disappear. And how are the tunnels under the sea built? Whenever there is water present, hundreds of tons of concrete and steel are required for tunnel construction. But how are the engineers going to construct the tube underwater? What would happen to the water? That's where having more advanced technology helps. China is skilled in paving the way for the construction of massive projects that astounded the whole globe. Yes, it can quickly build hospitals, enormous dams, and skyscrapers. But how will it construct a tunnel under the sea? To learn the truth, watch this video all the way through. Building even bridges and test tracks for high-speed trains on land is a challenge for many nations. For China, though, it is not a major concern because it has already constructed bridges for high-speed trains that span thousands of kilometers. The goal of China is not to stop here. It seeks to advance and further bring down production costs. Economic development is essential to China since it is what propels the nation's progress. China has invested hundreds of billions of dollars in the previous several decades to build massive projects that will benefit its 1.4 billion citizens. China was aware that it could create bridges and railroads on land, but what if they could be built underwater? For instance, building a bridge that links 12 provinces is necessary for China to link two provinces that are separated by another 10 provinces. The best thing to do is connect them all. But what if the water was the only thing linking the two? China might build a tunnel under the ocean, without incurring additional resources to create additional ports in each province, a straight tunnel that runs beneath the water would connect the two provinces. Zhaoshan and Ningbo were intended to be connected by China, but roads were unable to do so. Between them, there lies a sea, other than land. Imagine that you must go on land, then water, then again on land, and then again on water in order to reach Ningbo from Zhaoshan in order to comprehend the topography. For the land ports, China may construct a roadway, a bridge, or a railroad. But what use would the sea be to it? If a railroad was built, it would come to an end when the sea got in the way. This presented a challenge for the Zhaoshan Railway, which sought to link Ningbo and Zhaoshan. It was at this location that a $4 billion undersea tunnel had to be constructed. Real construction on the Genting Tunnel began in Zhaoshan. The first plan was for constructing a bridge that would connect Genting Island to Zhaoshan. After that, the bridge will become an underwater tunnel leading to Ningbo City. Although this building concept was excellent, no nation has ever before constructed such a lengthy undersea tube. There are only two submarine tunnels in the world, and the Genting Tunnel is the longer of the two. China under pressure since it was preparing to undertake a novel endeavor. Engineers from Western nations deemed the Genting Tunnel an impossible endeavor. However, Chinese engineers were certain they could construct it. The project would take six years to complete, according to China Railway Constructions for the Iron and Steel Institute, since building a tunnel beneath the sea requires time and effort. The Chinese engineers chose to take on the engineering challenge of the 16.2 kilometers long tunnel. But how did they manage to build the tunnel? One idea was to start by constructing the tunnel's land portions. After those components are constructed, the two ends would be sealed, and the tunnel components would then be submerged. They would be connected to the tunnel section there that is currently there. The tunnel's one side would be opened, while its other side would remain closed. This method would be used to gradually join more and more tunnel components until a full tunnel was constructed. Chinese engineers also employ the open maintained building style. This method involves clearing the area of the water where the tunnel should be constructed. Construction of temporary barriers serving as stoppers is done while the water inside them is removed. As a result, the engineers receive land on which to build the tunnel. However, this method is only used to shallow soft soil. Because of the tremendous depth of the Genting Tunnel, this strategy might be utilized when exploring that facility. Due to the fact that the ground lies 78 meters below the surface, it is impossible to construct walls of that length in order to retain the water. As a direct consequence of this, the Chinese engineers decided to go with the first strategy. On land, a section of the tunnel was constructed and a temporary water stop head was installed to cover the opening. A portion of those tunnel components had been flooded before. The trench has an addictive quality. After that, the remaining tunnel parts that were located above ground are reassembled with the final tunnel component. At this point, in between two different portions of the tunnel, one of the water stops has been eliminated, 
while the other has been left unopened. Using this approach, the tunnel components are brought down to the water surface in stages as the building of the tunnel gets underway. Another problem emerged though, due to the fact that the tunnel was 78 meters below the surface of the ocean. A significant amount of pressure was applied by the water. In addition, the tunnel is susceptible to natural disasters, such as earthquakes and other problems that are associated with the weather. What would happen if there is an earthquake while a rapid train is traveling through the underground tunnel? There is a possibility that the tunnel will develop leaks, which will have an effect on it. If the tunnel were to flood, the lives of hundreds of people would be put in jeopardy. When the tunnel was constructed, however, this problem was circumvented by using concrete and other building materials that were of a high strength. The Chinese engineers working on the tunnel were aware that it would be far shorter than 78 meters and hence needed to be extremely strong. Rock solid, if not even more so than that. The Genting Tunnel is able to resist a pressure equal to 1 megaparsec as a consequence of this. In the past, the tunnels had a pressure resistance of up to 0.7 megaparsec L, which meant that they were able to endure any and all water pressure. After a significant amount of time and labor, China finalized the construction of the Genting Submerged Underwater Tunnel in the year 2020. China's engineering expertise was on display on June 1, 2020, when the Jin Tang Tunnel opened for high-speed rail traffic for the first time ever. The projects that Western nations work on are never accepted by China until after they have been completed in their entirety. When news circulated that the Genting Tunnel had been finished, the general consensus was that China was the only country that could have conceived of such a concept and then seen it through to completion by constructing the world's longest Undersea Tunnel. China has proved that it is capable of constructing anything imaginable. For decades, China has been selling its infrastructure all around the world, which other countries have studied and tried to copy. It would appear that China will continue to achieve technological wonders for the next many decades, while remaining thousands of kilometers behind other countries. Why aren't other countries able to construct massive infrastructure projects like China? Would it be necessary for Western nations in the future to engage Chinese engineers and laborers in order to build the greatest bridges and subterranean tunnels? Share your opinion in comments. Also, click on this video to watch about another shocking project.